Hi, I'm Paul. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, today I'm going to talk about side projects, hopefully. We'll find out. Side projects. So, uh, and how not to kill them. And uh, I know because I recently just killed a side project. And I've been thinking, what could I have done differently to help that project survive? Um, first, a quick some background about me. Um, uh, I currently work at Metafilter.com as a developer. Uh, I put together a few books for O'Reilly's hack series, and I helped develop uh, Blogger.com, which was an early web blog system. So I've had these fantastic day jobs um, th that are just thrilling, but I have this, this nagging habit of starting side projects, and these are just a few of them, and, and some of them survive and some of them don't. But one that I thought could make the transition from a side project to a day job or to something more sustaining is called Orblox. And Orblogs was a site that gathered together uh, weblog authors from around Oregon into one site. So you could easily find bloggers in Corvallis and Portland, and, and it sliced their posts up by topic and by city. Uh, and, and, and by a lot of measurable metrics, it was a successful site. We had, you know, it was, had good traffic and uh, lots of positive feedback. But I had to shut the site down last month, and I've just been mulling over what could I have done differently? Um, how could I have how could I undo this problem? And, um, you know, there is no master undo. So, uh, with the magic of hindsight, I'm going to imagine that I can go back in time to my 2003 self and give myself some pieces of advice. I think like a lot of developers, I tend to focus on the next iteration. I focus on the next feature rather than the big picture. And so these are my, uh, some of my big picture ideas that I wish I would have thought about throughout my project. Um, and I'm going to talk about each one just as quick as it is. Um, so, uh, the first one is about rules, and, and as a programmer, I, I like simple rules, and you can build a lot of complexity out of having very simple rules. Um, but I was very attached to those rules at the same time, and when you have a hobby, uh, you can follow rules to their ultimate logical conclusion. Um, but if you want something that lasts or something that's sustainable, you have to be willing to abandon your rules that you created at the beginning. So I had these rules, um, must be a web blog, author must be in Oregon, and everything about the site was free. Um, and I wanted to see those through to their conclusion, even though the environment that the rules were operating in was constantly changing. So web blogs, there are obviously exponential growth, um, and businesses discovered that you could increase page rank with uh, web blogs. And so what started for me as a love for um, as a love for amateur content, amateur writers, and connecting independent authors soon became a commercial business operation without my knowledge, basically. I was, I was working for companies in Oregon uh, for free. So the other thing I would do is get more people involved. Uh, I, I was sort of a benevolent dictator of this project, and it's great because um, I have ultimate control over, over the project. Um, but there are lots of ways that I could have had people involved, and I should have opened up this process. And, and just as an example, I didn't write production level code. Um, but as we just heard, you should always write code as if other people are going to be involved. And if I had done that, it would have been easier for people to get involved. So, and, and people will become attracted to your project. If it's moderately successful, you should tap some of that energy of people connecting with a project that would have helped. Um, and charge for something. This is something I should have done. Uh, you know, I, I played around with advertising on the site and it just didn't work, but I should have kept trying. And, and there are a couple of reasons why I think it's important to have money enter the process to go from a hobby to something more sustainable. Um, this is a quote that resonated with me. Um, Play is work that you enjoy doing for nothing. And, and that's basically what I was doing. And I didn't create work blogs to make money. I did it because I loved uh, independent authors. I wanted to promote that. And I wanted to find out more about Oregon. But the realities are hobbies cost money. And um, if I was talking to myself in the past, I would say, you know, work on that a little harder. Um, and this is the rule I came up with that I'm going to follow in the future. Find the most annoying part of your project and charge for it or farm it out. <laughs> because. Uh, when you're, when you're adding, you know, your 100th real estate blog to your project, and that's not what you, Oh, and don't have kids. That was another thing. <laughs> this is my son, Eddie, who's a, a year old. And the and best thing to happen to my life, but the worst thing to happen to my side projects. Um, and so, so just one more time, these are the... 
these are the big picture items that, that I would uh, consider or think about as, as I'm working on a side project in the future. And thank you.